Hi, thanks for joining me today for this edition of the Bell video blog. I am Eric Bjornstedt with Bell Performance, uh, and today we're going to talk about natural gas. Specifically, we're going to talk about the Jordan Cove project out in Coos Bay, Oregon. Uh, the Jordan Cove project is a great example of the, the, the problems that we have to solve when we get to figure out how, how we're going to deal with all this abundant natural gas that we have come across. Uh, we've done blogs on this before. The natural gas picture is really booming here in the United States. Uh, so much so that some people are going to start calling us the, uh, the, the OPEC of the West, so to speak. Uh, we are finding all of this natural gas that we really weren't anticipating we would find, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and so uh, that has really driven natural gas prices down such that while pla some places in the world like Japan are paying $15 per million BTUs for natural gas, uh, we're paying you know, prices here in the States maybe $4, $4.20 per BTU. So we've really got a tremendous advantage. And uh, there's also a tremendous opportunity for the companies that have this gas to make a lot of money by ex exporting it to places that are willing to pay for it. And so that's basically what they are proposing at Jordan Cove. Uh, Jordan Cove is a huge project that has been in the works for a long time. I think their budget for the project is like six billion dollars I think and uh, it involves their 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 widening the harbor uh, if you don't know about Coos Bay Coos Bay is the largest port on the west coast between San Francisco down in California and Seattle up at the, basically the top of the border so it's it's the largest port in between those two places and they are widening the uh, the, the port they're dredging out the bottom so that they will be able to fit uh, at least two of these huge tanker ships that they are going to fill with, I think it's one, uh, I want to say the number is one billion cubic feet of compressed natural gas. Uh, that's enough to supply energy needs for four million people every day. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of natural gas, and so that begs the question that a lot of, a lot of people are asking that a lot of people have a problem with, and that is, uh, if we're trying to become more energy uh, independent here at home, why are we shipping such a huge amount of natural gas out of the country? Now, uh, it's not our point here with this blog post to say that what they're doing is a bad thing. One thing that, that these people uh, you know, maybe don't take into account is the fact that uh, if you are a private company and you have an obligation to your shareholders to maximize the value that you're producing as a company, and you have the opportunity to sell natural gas to some place like Japan, who will pay fifteen dollars a square foot, uh, or excuse me, fifteen dollars a, a million BTUs. Why, you know, you know, you can't be expected to keep that here in the states and sell it for four. I mean, um, you know, that, that that's really just the way it is. So uh, they're just making a business decision that is in the best interests of the company. Now. Uh, elements of the controversy, well, the people who are for this project, obviously, they want the private companies to succeed. They also want the jobs that are going to come with it. Um, there, because there are facilities, there is a power plant that they're building that's going to provide the power that's necessary to compress this natural gas, uh, because it takes, it takes energy, it takes you know, electrical power to run that equipment to be able to compress the gas, into a uh, you know suitable form for shipping, uh, and they estimate that it's going to create like 170 jobs, and those aren't burger flipping jobs, obviously. Those are jobs that are going to average over seventy thousand dollars a year in salary. Now, 170 jobs for a community like Coos Bay. What you have to realize about Coos Bay is that. Uh, they uh, have really suffered over the last decade as the timber industry has shut down. They were really reliant on timber. And as that has shut down and phased out, a lot of the young people in that area have had to move out of town in order to find jobs. And so this community, this area of the country, is losing the, the young heart and soul demographic that's going to be relied upon to you know to continue the community, uh, and and you know not just for this year but for for decades to come. Well, a lot of those people are gonna want to move back 
you know, there will be 170 new jobs to uh, give to these kind of people that are going to be able to sustain this community for generations to come. Um, so you have that. On the other hand, people who don't like it, uh, you have some people that uh, have a problem with the pipeline that is uh, going to be transporting this gas. Uh, the gas is not produced in Oregon. It is produced in places like Utah, a few states over. And so you have to have a pipeline that's going to bring that gas to Coos Bay to be compressed and then shipped. And the problem is that that pipeline runs over private property. And there's a lot of people, like ranchers, uh, pe uh, conservation groups that have purchased land in the past specifically for preservation that, uh, you know, they, they've got a problem with, with these pipelines going through their land. You know, these ranchers, who normally are for private, you know, private enterprise, they're certainly not socialists or anything, but they, they, they have a problem with a pipeline splitting their ranches in half, and you, you can't say you, sh you, know, you can really blame them, right? So anyway, that, that's just a picture for, for those that don't live in the Northwest. That's a picture of one of the really big energy projects that's going on, the Coos Bay uh, Jordan Cove Energy Project. So uh, if you'd like to find out a little bit more information about it, we did write a blog about it. Uh, it's bellperforms.com slash blog, of course. Um, if you like this, uh, th this video blog post, you can find more information on this and other topics at bellperformance.com. Or go to our educational website at www.wefixfuel.com. So anyway, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, I am Eric Bjornstedt with Bell Performance, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.